A majority of orthodontic treatment is done with the fixed appliances which mainly comprise of brackets, arch wires and ligatures. Uh, this lecture deals with few of the uh, alloys which are most commonly used as an arch wire in orthodontic treatments. Four types of arch wires are most commonly used in orthodontic treatments. Number one, stainless steel wires. Number two, chrome cobalt wires. Number three, nickel titanium wires. And then number four, beta titanium wires. Ideally, an arch wire must have a large spring back property. That is, it should be possible for the wire to be deflected over a long distance without permanent deformation. This means that a clinician is assured for a large range of uh, the movement with minimal adjustments. Secondly, the wire should have high formability. That is, it should have a capability of being easily shaped, bent or uh, it should uh, be transformed into complicated configurations like loops and helices without getting fractured. First, let's talk about stainless steel arch wires. Steel are iron based alloys that contain less than 1.2% carbon. But when 12 to 25 percent of chromium is added to the steel, the alloy is called as stainless steel. These arch wires are available in round, square and rectangular shapes and each shape has different sizes available. Talking about the advantages of stainless steel arch wire, first it is a biocompatible alloy. Secondly, it has the capability to withstand the high occlusal forces due to its high stiffness. The third advantage is that it can be cold worked without the risk of fracture. Another advantage is the good formability, uh, the property which is helpful when used as an orthodontic band or ligatures. This property is also very useful in cases when uh, many small stainless steel wires they can be twisted together to form a multi-stranded arch wires. These arch wires are also corrosion resistant except for the joints where soldering or welding is performed. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of stainless steel arch wires. First is the lower spring back property. Well, uh, it has a lower spring back property than the nickel titanium alloys which makes it a poor initial alignment arch wire. Secondly, more frequent activations are required because of the high stiffness of the stainless steel arch wires. Then, uh, these arch wires they also deliver higher forces as compared to the wires made of other alloys of the same diameter. Uh, this may cause some discomfort to the patient. Soldering is demanding because uh, if the temperature is higher than 500 degrees centigrade, it affects the corrosion resistance of the alloy. Chrome cobalt is an ideal material for the medical devices because it possesses the properties of being biocompatible, radio-opaque and non-magnetic. Uh, this alloy is used to make the pacemakers, artificial heart valves, stents and orthopedic wires. Talking about the composition of the chrome cobalt alloy for the arch wires in orthodontics, uh, cobalt is the base element whereas the chromium it uh, gives the passivating effect which makes the wire corrosion resistant. Uh, nickel it uh, increases the ductility, morbidinium it acts as a hardener, manganese acts as oxide scavenger whereas carbon it increases the strength, hardness and ductility. Both iron and beryllium, uh, they act as the hardener for the chrome cobalt alloy. The chrome cobalt arch wires, they are biocompatible, having an excellent resistance to tarnish and corrosion. In its non-heat treated form, uh, the chrome cobalt arch wires, they have an excellent formability, which means they can be easily twisted and uh, turned according to the application. Because of its high resiliency, the chrome cobalt arch wires they have high resistance to fatigue and distortion. Talking about the disadvantages, uh, the first one is that the chrome cobalt arch wires they have a tendency uh, to harden at a point where the two segments are welded or soldered. The second disadvantage is that the chrome cobalt arch wires they cannot be bent again and again from the same point because uh, due to repeated bending it gets fractured. In case of chrome cobalt arch wires it is preferred to use a low fusing solders uh, because uh, when heated above the 650 degrees centigrade, uh, it results in the loss of yield and tensile strength. Another disadvantage is that these arch wires, they release high forces uh, during unloading, which causes the discomfort to the patient during tooth movement. Now let's talk about the nickel titanium arch wires, which were developed at uh, the Naval Ordnance Laboratory 
that's why they are also called as nitinol Nitinol possess a specialized property of shape memory effect which means that uh, it can revert to its original shape even after repeated deformations let's talk about the advantages of nitinol uh, the most important advantage is that it has an excellent resiliency which means that uh, it can be easily tied up to even very very malaligned teeth without getting permanently deformed Due to a uh, good spring back property frequent activations of the wires are not needed uh, which means that uh, there is no need to change the wire or activate it at every appointment uh, one wire can work for a longer range and a longer period of time nitai exert very low forces and have uh, very low modulus of elasticity uh, these low forces are beneficial as they prevent the root resorption and maintain the periodontal health of the tooth Another big advantage of nitai arch wires is that uh, they have low load deflection rate which clinically means that whether the tooth is little out of arch or much out of alignment uh, when the wire is tied to the tooth the tooth will experience the same amount of force uh, this is extremely desirable property because uh, very low and constant forces are provided by the arch wire during the tooth movement The lack of formability is a major disadvantage in case of nitai wires because uh, the procedures where the first second or third order bends they have to be given in the arch wires uh, in cases of fine turning of the tooth movement it becomes very difficult in cases of nitai arch nitai possesses springiness uh, which means that the wire can shift from uh, one side to the other and may hurt the buccal mucosa the beta titanium arch wires which are also called as titanium molybdenum alloy wires they were introduced in the orthodontics in 1981 uh, talking about the composition titanium and molybdenum they are the major elements whereas zirconium and tin these are the minor additions in the composition of tma Besides being biocompatible, TMA uh, possesses a balance of properties that every clinician needs like high elasticity, low stiffness and ease of joining. It can be easily twisted, it has excellent formability, possesses true weldability which means that satisfactory joints can be made uh, in the wire by welding. These wires deliver low biomechanical forces as compared to stainless steel and cobalt chromium arch wires. uh the uh, beta titanium arch wires they have excellent tarnish and corrosion resistance well besides being uh, uh, expensive the tma it possesses a disadvantage of uh, high surface roughness which can cause the high frictional forces the other type of arch wires used in orthodontics are composite arch wires uh, which is formed by adjusting the ceramic to uh, polymer proportions and gold arch wires So this was a brief lecture on orthodontic arch wires I hope it was informative thank you very much take care